Here we have a Bunsen burner, a device that we use in the lab to heat stuff up. Well, basically what happens is we take methane gas from here, goes through, is stopped by this needle valve right here. See that right there? These gaskets here prevent the gas from getting in and this shuts it off at the very tip. Just pop that in there, righty tidy like that. And then as the and then as the gas is let in, it comes through this little hole here right in the center and shoots upwards through this barrel right here where the gas and air mix together and then they come out at the top as a nice flame. Now you need to have the perfect mixture of gas and oxygen because if you don't, you're not going to get what's called complete burning. This controls the amount of air you let in. As the gas shoots up, it creates an area of low pressure and air from outside is pushed in where they can mix together up in the barrel. When you first light the Bunsen burner, you want to make sure you have an air hole, but not one that's too big. Because gas and air burn together, and if you have too much air and not enough gas, you're not going to really get a flame. You're going to get a whoosh. This is a nice Bunsen burner flame right here. Nice and clean burning. But notice what happens if I open up the air. Now there's too much air going through, and the flame goes a little bit all whooshy on you. Now if we close the air hole down all the way, we get what's called the luminous flame. This is because there's no air being let in here for the gas to burn. So you just have pure gas shooting up here and it's not meeting oxygen until it gets into the outside environment. And so it doesn't mix completely with it, it doesn't burn completely, it burns incompletely and gives off soot, basically tiny particles of carbon. And those, car those particles of carbon in the flame get hot, and things that get hot tend to glow. So that's basically what you're seeing here. A flame is just incompletely burned gas in the solid phase whose particles are glowing because they're so hot. Let's open this up again. Now we have the perfect stoichiometric ratio of oxygen to methane. So, too little air, you get incomplete burning. Too much air, you get a whoosh. I call this the whooshing flame of death, and I call this Oz the Great and Terrible. When you burn methane in oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water vapor in a reaction that we call combustion. That's why you saw it burning over there. It was combusting, burning. So anyway, the ratio between methane and oxygen has to be a one to two ratio, otherwise it's not going to burn completely. When you turn the air off and you get the yellow flame, the reason is you're not providing those two moles of oxygen. So the methane is not going to burn completely. You're going to get some carbon as a product as well. And that carbon glows, giving you the flame. If you open it up too much, you'll have too much oxygen. The methane will still burn, but the extra oxygen will make it go What's this contraption, you ask? That's a pretty good question, and you're going to find out in just a moment. This here is a reaction flask into which I'm going to place some zinc metal. Notice the incredibly careful way in which I measure this zinc out. This is a drying tube. See, when I carry out the chemical reaction I'm about to carry out, it's going to generate a fair amount of water vapor, and I don't want water vapor contaminating my final result. So this contains crystals of a mineral called dryerite, which will remove the water vapor, leaving just the product I want to produce to come out the other end. The product I'm trying to produce will be forced through this tube and into this bottle, whereupon, as it fills the bottle, it will displace air out the bottom. All right, as this gas comes in, oxygen and nitrogen and whatever else is in air comes out until I'm fairly sure that the only thing in this bottle is the gas that I'm producing. What gas am I producing? Well, I'm going to use zinc and hydrochloric acid. Now, as this is a fairly standard single replacement reaction, the zinc and the chlorine will come together to make zinc chloride, and as a result, diatomic hydrogen gas will be given off through this tube up into here and trapped. Now it's balanced. All right, now let's throw the hydrochloric acid in now that I am properly outfitted. Before I start this experiment, I'm gonna dilute this down a little bit. This is six molar hydrochloric, and that's a little bit stronger than I really wanted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little water in here first 
just so that the reaction takes place less quickly. There we go. And now, into that, we are going to place our hydrochloric acid. Let the experiment proceed. It's generating some hydrogen gas, not a lot. I don't want it to be produced too quickly. I don't want it to overwhelm my system because it's fairly sealed up, so I don't want to produce so much gas that it actually blows this thing up. So we're just going to let this run. We're starting to get condensation inside this flask. What that means is we're getting some water vapor. It's a very exothermic reaction, so the heat it generates is going to produce some water vapor, a little more than what we would normally expect. Since the only thing I want to come in through here is hydrogen, this drying tube will remove the water vapor and so that the only thing that goes through the rest of the way is the hydrogen gas. What you're seeing forming in here, this dark color here, is the zinc chloride. At this point, we should have generated enough hydrogen to completely displace the air inside of this. So what we're going to do is going to remove this rubber tube put my finger over top like that. Now hydrogen being less dense than air is going to stay in this bottle. So I'm going to light the top. Huh. Well that's not happy puppy fun. All we're getting is a little... I thought hydrogen was explosive. That's the right color for hydrogen when it burns. This thing is supposed to be explosive. Why am I just getting like a candle? That's bizarre. Uh-oh. Huh. That's a disappointment. <laughs> okay, so why did that happen? Simple. Hydrogen won't burn unless it has oxygen to burn with. Well, there was no oxygen in here. We drove all the oxygen out. The only place there was oxygen is out here. So when I lit right here, the hydrogen, being less dense than air, was rising up through the top, and it burned in the presence of the oxygen up here. Now, that used up the hydrogen. Now, of course, when the hydrogen gets used up, air comes in to replace the missing volume of gas and eventually you're going to reach exactly the right stoichiometric ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in this container. And the moment you have a richer environment in here than you have out here, a stoichiometrically perfect situation, the flame is going to strike back and ignite this. This is one of the reasons why you never want to take like a bottle of hairspray and put a match up to it and go <laughs> with it because the flame could strike back. And you just saw what happened when a flame strikes back it can end, well, let's say, not well. What is the stoichiometric ratio? Well, the reaction is hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas forms two molecules of water vapor. Let's balance that out. So the proper ratio between hydrogen and oxygen that you need is a two to one mole ratio. You just need a two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. And when you get that perfect stoichiometric ratio, well, then the flame's gonna say, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Kaboom!